Cotton and Rosemary DeCamp in The Witness. And here is your host in Hollywood, Robert Young. In the normal course of most any day, every one of us is a witness to matters of life and death. The way we involve ourselves in these vital matters makes our own lives worthwhile or meaningless. The test of friendship is not when things are going well, but when the going gets rough. A friend in need is a friend indeed, has been quoted for generations. But a man who's had a friend in need is the man who can prove who is a friend indeed. Mark Andrews is being paroled from prison, and he needs a friend. Yes? Mark Andrews is here, Warden. Oh, send him in. Well, Andrews, this is the big day. Yes, it is, Warden. Cigarette? No, no thanks. I've been smoking all morning, one after the other. Well, that's understandable. Getting out of prison after five years, it means stepping out and facing the world again. Not sure I can do it, Warden. I understand that, too. But you're wrong. Your prison record proves it. You're being paroled for good behavior. Keep it that way. My field men report your wife and son are most anxious to have you home. It's sure been tough on Della and Gary. My son's ten years old now. Oh, um, here's the information concerning your parole officer, the days you report and where. Yes, sir. Remember never to leave town without the parole officer's permission. And most important of all, keep the behavior good. <laughs> Good luck, Andrews. So long. Hey, Mark! Mark! Tom! Clarence! Oh, it's good to see hey, you, Hey, how Mark. are you? Boy, you look hey. good. Been feeding you good, huh? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> what are you fellas doing here? Oh, Della asked us to pick you up. Mark, she's so excited. Uh, and she sends this message. Hurry home. Yeah, come on. Get in, get in. Uh, oh, how is she? Della, she's just fine. My boy. Oh, oh, Gary's almost as tall as you are. No, not really. You can't believe it. Well, Mark, there it is, the big city. And just ahead is the new freeway. And in ten minutes, you're home. Tom, Clarence, oh, this is great. After five years, like, like old times, I don't deserve to have friends like you two. There's something else, Mark. Tom, you tell him. Oh, Clarence, the honor is yours. I'm busy driving. Okay. Here, Mark, open it. What is it? Uh... Oh, money. Are you, you guys kidding? No, we're not kidding. It's yours. Five hundred dollars cash. No. No, I, I, I can't take it. You bet you take it. Business has been good for us, and every week Clarence and I have been putting away a few dollars because we knew you'd need it. Oh, you fellas are too much. Yeah, but that's not all. More? Tomorrow morning at 9.30, you've got an interview for a job. Uh, the Lawton Denning Company is in dire need of an expert accountant. Oh, but Tom, don't you think they'll... Uh, I- I'm almost certain. You see... You've been highly recommended by their sales manager, me. Oh, I can't believe it. Who ever thought this would happen? Why shouldn't it happen? Well, it's just so much more than I expected. Or, or maybe deserve. Everyone deserves a second chance. Yes, Mark. Is Gary asleep? He's asleep. And I just found out how Tom Sawyer ended. <laughs> Are you tired, dear? You've got a long day, and tomorrow you've got an important interview. Oh, no, Della. I, I'm, I'm afraid. Of what? That interview. Facing people. Oh. I'm afraid of tomorrow. Well, you needn't be. Things haven't changed that much. But people remember. Well, they also understand and, and, and forgive. Tom and Clarence proved that today. I I still can't get over those guys. Good morning. Good morning. 
evening. I'm Mark Andrews. I have a 9.30 appointment with Mr. Denning. Mr. Denning, we'll see you in a few minutes. Will you have a seat, please? Uh, Thank you. There's one leaving in an hour. Round trip? No, uh, one way, please. Hello? Tom, Della Andrews. Have you seen Mark? Hello, Della. You came to see Mr. Denning. Tom, something's happened. I'm scared. Mr. Denning's office called. There wasn't any interview. No interview? No, the secretary told me Mark just walked in and they turned right around and walked out. Just like that. Why, I can't believe it. What should I do? Oh, don't do anything, Della. He probably got nervous and went out for coffee. Tom, listen, he tried to talk himself out of going this morning. He was frightened. And I insisted that he go. Well, did he carry all the money with him? What money? Tom, what money? Uh, all right, Della, I might as well tell you. Class and I put away $500 to help him get started and... We gave it to him yesterday. Oh, John. Now, listen, Della, just sit tight. I'll call Clarence and we'll get back to you. Bus number 21, westbound for Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Amarillo, Lubbock, Roswell, Carlsbad, El Paso, and Juarez, now loading on dock number 7. Departure time, 11.40 a.m. in exactly 25 minutes. I thought you'd never finish reading that paper, mister. Well, look at that old fellow. Found asleep on the bed. You two been traveling far? All the way from Philadelphia. We got all night and most tomorrow to go. All the way to El Paso. Glad when I can get him into a soft bed. (laughs) That's a cute little guy. What's his name? Timmy. You know, he's been using my knee for a pillow for over two hours. Would you mind sliding over here in my place? I need a cup of coffee bad. He won't be any bother. He's a sound sleeper. Oh, sure. I'll only be a minute. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. Say, he is a sound sleeper. Be right back. <laughs> Dad? Oh, now take it easy, Timmy. Your dad will be right back. Well, be careful, Anna. <laughs> You're still half asleep, Timmy. My name's Andrews. Well, where's my dad? W- where'd he go? Help me. Now, wait a minute. You keep cut. Why? Why, well, you're... You're blind. Where'd my dad go? He went for coffee. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Where else could he have gone? Do you see my dad yet, Mr. Andrews? No, no, I don't. Now, you, you wait here, Timmy. I, I'll see if I can find him. Okay, I won't go anyplace. Oh, no, no, forget it. I I can't leave you. I can't just sit here. Oh, uh, excuse me, miss. Would you just stand here for a minute? This boy... I'm terribly uh, sorry, but my bus is leaving. I don't stop asking. 
my bus is leaving, too. Uh, Timmy, I want you to stay right here. I, I've got to do something. I can't turn you over to the police because then I'd really be in a jam. I'm sorry. I don't want to be any trouble. Trouble? What do you know about trouble? You're just a kid. <laughs> oh. oh, Timmy, I... I'm sorry, Timmy. Well, you go ahead, Mr. Andrews. I'll, I'll, I'll be all right. Come on, Timmy. Come with me. Where are you going to take me? We're going over there by the newsstand. When we get there, I'll tell the man and someone will come and get you now. Come on, come with me. No, I'll wait for my dad right here, where he left me. He'll be back. That's a long cup of coffee, Timmy. Come on, you come with me. Oh, I, I won't go with you. I, I'm afraid I'll get lost. My dad always says, stay put and I'll find you. Have you ever been lost, Timmy? Well, never. Not even once in my whole life. My dad was always there. My golly, Frank. We're about to miss our bus. Well, Dad, where have you been? Well, first, I want to apologize for staying so long. Ran into an old friend from my hometown. We got to get him over coffee. But I wasn't worried. Not for a bit, I wasn't. Back home, I got a reputation for being able to spot an honest face just like that. <laughs> and the second I saw you, I knew Timmy was in good hands. Thanks again, friend. Let's go, Timmy. Well, Mr. Andrews? Yes, Timmy. Did you miss your bus? No. Which way are you headed? Well, right now, I'm not sure. I thought I was going one way, but I think I'll try the other way. I sure hope you get where you're going, Mr. Andrews. Last call. Westbound bus number 21. Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Amarillo, Lubbock, Roswell, Carlsbad, El Paso, and Florida. You have been listening to The Witness. And here again is your host, Robert Young. Mark Andrews was able to make his first big step on the way back because of people who knew what friendship really means. Friendliness helps us to become friendly. Trustworthiness helps us to become trustworthy. How can we in our own lives accept ourselves and each other in a trusting way of living together in spite of every contrary and destructive force? I'd like to thank Joseph Cotton, Rosemary DeCamp, Nestor Paiva, Virginia Gregg, Peter Leeds, and Tim Matheson for sharing their talents with us. And thanks to each one of you for being with us. Transcribed in Hollywood, The Witness is produced by Marjorie Hunt Pearson. Directed by Thomas Freebairn Smith and written by Lawrence Waddy. This is Art Gilmore speaking for the Episcopal Church, which presents The Witness. We hope you'll join us again soon for the next Witness. <laughs> <laughs>